this thing out. grew up only vaguely aware of God. I don't mean that I understood anything about him really or that I believed anything particular about him, but I just was aware that something bigger was out there in the cosmos and nearby watching and listening. It just made sense to me. My mom wasn't a believer except culturally. We were from the South after all. And my dad wasn't a believer until he and my mom got a divorce. And then he was virtually out of my life. This left me and my siblings lost emotionally and spiritually uh, with an imperfect and equally lost mother, the blind leading the blind. I remember reading the Bible like an accomplishment I had to have. The few times I saw my dad, that's what he was doing. And since I looked up to him so much, I had to do the same, right? But as I read God's holy word, it passed in and out in one ear and out the other. I wasn't just a bag with holes, I was a bottomless bucket. So needless to say, I was about 11 when I stopped reading the Bible, and 12 when I stopped praying to the unknown, mystical, and mysterious God. And I'd be a fool not to mention that it was Satan who taught me to do so. See, my life wasn't as simple as an absentee father and a lost, neglectful mother. It was plagued with abuse, physical, verbal, and emotional. I was bullied in every neighborhood we moved to. My mom's second husband beat me and my brother, and I was even sexually assaulted by a young man when I was 12 while I lived in a foster home. But things seemed to start turning around at some point. Eventually, I got out of foster care, and even though I found myself to be full of anger and bitterness and a deep, dark lostness, I was happy when I was finally able to talk to my dad. Oh, sorry about that. I quit again. Talk to my dad regularly after silence for a little over three years. I remember the day he showed up to my house to pick us up for the summer. We hadn't seen each other in years, so you can imagine I was filled with an inexpressible joy that my father was there for me, his son. He had come to get me. But I didn't let it show. My pride and bitterness and anger wouldn't let it. When I saw, my, saw his face, my heart smiled, but my experience had taught me to keep my face like stone. I let him in the house casually. I didn't run to hug him as I knew I should have, and I said, hey. And I walked into the bathroom to take a shower. As it turns out, he was the godliest man I had ever met. In fact, he is still one of the godliest men I have ever known. He preached, he prayed, he discipled, and he wept tears of joy whenever he worshipped. He was known to have a gift of prophecy, and it would often amaze me when he told me of a dream in great detail, which he claimed was from the Lord, and then to see it unravel exactly as God had shown him without fail every single time. And my dad just treated it as a kind of a, ah yes, that is to be expected with God sort of way. No surprise there. I was even blessed to see God heal someone through his prayer right in front of me. But in my blindness, lost in sin and unable to understand or grasp the things of God, nor desiring to, those things just slipped from my memory and thoughts like <coughs> grease between the fingers. The water of life didn't so much as wrinkle my hands, or so I thought. Nine months into living with him, he died, and I was forced to leave Florida where he lived and go back to Mississippi. There, I became enraged. My dad was the last thing I loved in this world, and even that was gone. Fantasies of the bloodiest sorts of violence filled my heart and mind. I cursed my mother. I beat my little sister and brother. Verbally abused, abused him as well. I went out to the streets. I got involved with gangs and could often be found in certain homies' houses, committing myself to regular old, rambunctious, and generally rebellious behavior involving drugs, hip-hop, thievery, guns, and other unmentionables. By the time I was 19, I had fallen in love with a girl who was equally, equally as wild as I was. She had been abused, beaten, neglected, and had a heart full of murderous hatred. She got herself into trouble, and of course I was there to save the day. 
I helped her run from the cops, navigate bad neighborhoods, and even put her into contact with certain sorts of people no kid should know. As you can imagine, the stress was unbelievable. And on top of that, she and her own lostness began to sleep around on me. And this is what finally broke me. I remember the night God finally began to reveal the truth to me. I had been examining all these things in greater detail, and I was weeping in my college dorm room, hoping, wishing, and planning to die. I planned to jump from the top floor of the building I lived in, right out the window. I would go head first and aim for the concrete. Lights out, the end. Like I said, I didn't know God and was wholly unable to know him. I had tried everything to make my life good, not knowing what good even was, and I couldn't figure it out. But as I stood at that window, who I now know was the Holy Spirit spoke to me and filled me with a strange fear. He said, they say if you commit suicide, you will go to hell. Hell. That place I always considered a joke. I used to make fun of it. I used to tell people I would go to hell happily and I would be king there. <laughs> I was a fool, sorry. But then by the light of God's grace, fear struck me. So I prayed to this unknown, mysterious, and mystical God sincerely for the first time since I was 12. And I said, okay, God, if you're real, then you're going to show me what I should do, or I'm going to kill myself. I thought, God isn't going to show himself. And when he doesn't, it would justify my suicide and prove I have nothing to fear afterwards. But what I didn't know at that time was that the joke was on me. That night in a dream, I was driving away from my then girlfriend, and I heard a voice behind me say, you will leave her, and that changed everything for me. I woke up the next morning amazed. Over the next two weeks, after having several more strange dreams and coming into contact with other Christians, I was totally convinced. God shed his light in my heart and convicted me of sin. I remember going to my dorm room, back to that window, this time confessing sin, crying out over all my evil crying out over cursing him to his face, and I asked him to enter my heart and change me and live in me. I finally could see my own sin and lostness, and even better, I finally understood the need for repentance and faith in the only crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. God saved me. My father had come to me. He came to get me. He broke through that stony facade all the way through to that stony, blind heart of mine and filled it with his love and peace. And now I know him, and he knows me. He took my rage and anger out of me as easy as wiping a dry race board, like it never existed. So my encouragement is this. If God can save me, he can save anyone. He has saved those in darker places. He can save anyone. Jesus, God in the flesh, came, died on the cross for our sin, and rose again for our justification. And all those who repent and believe will be saved. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. No true words have ever been spoken. So come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm.